Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, if you saw my last video, you'll probably know that I tried doing this before. Um, I just didn't like the way anything sounded. Uh, I was using my Vemico in the car, and even my own voice actually sounded really nasally, for one, which is kind of weird, but windows up, driving regular, the noise just made the camera crackle a lot. I didn't think it used to be that bad. Maybe it's bounced around too much in my GoPro case. Um, either way, I'm just gonna use the GoPro this time and show you, uh, I got five maps built. There's a big swing in the two-step recovery, so I have it uh, cut at 4,000. One I have recovery at 3,780, which is closer to like the factory rev limit is when you're not rolling, which by the way, annoys the shit out of me when you buy a new car and then you're sitting there and having them in my Accord. Uh, <laughs> a friend came over in the 370Z and we went out to eat and he parked next to me. So just to shit like, uh, not show off because I wasn't in an Accord but I wanted to mess with them. So I hit the pedal and it was like one, none, 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 at like three grand. And it was, uh, I mean, not embarrassing because it was a friend of mine and I was just screwing around, but it was pretty pathetic that I couldn't rev my own damn car. Uh, I hope this rain doesn't screw the audio up this time. I think GoPro can take care of it, but we'll see. Anyways, um, then the other one, I have a much shorter recovery. Cut at 4,000, and it recovers at 39.65. So you can hear the difference, see the difference, and then we'll see if one or the other builds more boost. And then I enabled anti-lag, um, and I did it on the short recovery and the long recovery also, both of them. And on those, I did it uh, with four degrees after top dead center as the ignition target. Now, then just to see, I did one more. I only have five spots on my V2, and I don't want to have to reload maps onto that once I get going. So, the fifth one is the short recovery, but uh, 10 degrees after top dead center of ignition target. So now let me show you in the software just how you set it up. All right, so. Real quick, under rev limits, there's a high limit and a low limit. Okay, notice what the low limit is. And then go to basic two-step, see that. Now, just for shits and giggles, I'll show you what happens. If you change it here, and then you go up, well, it changes it there. Your low limit here is your two-step, basically for right now. I don't know if anything will change, but that's where you go. That's where it is. There you go. Okay, so now come down here to anti-lag. It'll probably be like that. You'll have to hit the plus sign to get into it. You will click to enable it. Now, minimum RPM. Obviously, it's hard to tell. I have it at 3600. It looks like 30,000 for me, but maybe on the computer and a bigger screen will be better. Um, you can't set that above what you have your two-step at because otherwise you'll never reach the RPM to enable anti-lag. So I have my cut at 4,000. I have this at 3,600 so that even when it recovers below 3,800, it'll still have anti-lag enabled. And this one I targeted 10. I originally wasn't sure if it looked up your table and then applied this change to it. So I messed with it the other day, and it looks like whatever you put here, it ignores the table and targets that value. So if you left it at 10, um, you're actually targeting 10 degrees before top dead center because you're pretty much always talking about ignition values as an advance. So that's 10 degrees of advance or 10 degrees before top dead center. So if you want it after, you want negative 10 degrees of advance. Okay, let me save it real quick. And I think in my haste this morning, I actually screwed up the uh, other ones and left it positive. So I'm going to go change that right now. All right, so I went back and changed those uh, to a 4 degrees after top of the center, a negative advanced value. So 
Uh, right now I'm going to load them all up in the V2, one by one. I'll flash them, rev the car so you can see uh, how it acts and then also how much boost we can build with all the different settings. I didn't know it was going to be raining this hard. I was still going to put the GoPro on the bumper uh, or on the trunk lid like last time so you could hear it outside. Uh, maybe I'll find a covered parking lot and do it in the parking lot or something like that so you can hear it. Um, I won't be launching at all this time because it's soaking wet and that just won't work for me. All right, so while I get the last uh, tune put up on the V2, I got three things I gotta say. The first one is, uh, my flex fuel is gonna happen. I wanted to do it already, but I had the converter and the pigtail for the sensor and stuff like that, but when it came time to tap it into the uh, secondary coolant temp sensor, I didn't have an elegant solution. And then uh, to hide the wires, nothing really planned good there either. So I got on a uh, McMaster car, and I actually, uh, not like the hard plastic loom, but the braided stuff that's like around O2 sensor wires a lot of the time, I bought uh, 20 feet of that in black. And then I bought some pins so I can hopefully take the plug apart and repin the coolant temp sensor plug and just make everything look better. So... I'm waiting on that, and then uh, <clears throat> I'm still not sure where I want to take my power source from because I really don't want to cut the lid. So, I don't know. I'll figure that part out when I'm doing it. Um, and by lid, I mean the fuse box lid. Um, okay. Well, it's done, but still. My second thing was, <laughs> when you're watching the V2, yes, the fuel trims are all over, but... I've done five revisions, and now I'm at the point where I keep going too far past zero each way. It's driving me nuts a little bit, but if you think, I started out with a positive 46% trim when I didn't edit anything yet, and then I had no way to base any numbers off of because that was a limit. I'm sure it wanted more, so I didn't have any kind of calculation to make, and then so my second try... I was at like plus 30 at idle, so I still didn't really drive it. My third try, uh, I went even higher, so really my third try was the first time I started driving it, and then I'm on uh, I've either driven on three or four changes. Um, I forget now exactly. Um, anyways, so there's that, why the trims will be all over. And then the third one is, uh, go check out my video I did, it's like coolest LEDs ever, or something like that. Um, I'll probably lower the threshold for the giveaway because it'll take a long time to hit 500 likes, I think. I'm not really sure why that video has way less exposure, I guess you'd say, than my first LED review I did, because that one is constantly like at the top of the list almost in uh, views every day, week, month, whatever. Um... I kind of feel bad for the company because they gave me the headlights to do the review and now nobody's watching it. Uh, and they were going to give me a set for the giveaway. They still might. If they don't, though, I'll just buy the set myself because I said I'm going to give the set away. Go check it out. Like it. Leave a comment. That's how you'll enter. And then one of these days, um, I'll decide how I'm going to figure out when I'll do it for one and how I'll do it. And then I'll give somebody some headlights. Uh... Okay, that was the three. Um, I'm going to flash the first one now to the actual car, and we'll start the testing. So you can see the ignition and the boost. All right, so I tried to go do it downstairs, but um, <laughs> I don't really care if I rev the car up uh, and just people are around me, but there's so many people down there pulling into this place that... Every time I look behind me, there's another car with people getting out of the car with their kids. And then you just feel like a jackass sitting at the limiter when that's going on. So I came upstairs. And what I did is I backed into this corner right here. So I'm going to roll my windows down. And that way, we'll just hear the sound echoing back there and coming back into the car. So let's do the first one where it is a small window between the cut and the recovery. Um, no anti-lag. 
So it's the RPM boost ignition. So about four pounds of boost, about 10 degrees of uh, advance on the ignition and staying pretty tight to four grand. Well, let's put the window down now. Now let's just listen to it. Alright, so this one is everything the same except for the recovery window on the, uh, the cut. Uh, so this one should fluctuate a lot more, uh, but timing should be the same. At least I didn't change anything because I didn't enable anti-lag. Uh, let's see what the boost could be. I think it was around 4, sometimes hitting 5 last time, I believe. I'm sure my intake temperature is going to climb this whole time. So that will have a little bit of an effect because there is a, a certain point where it'll pull timing because of the intake temp. But that's not till about 85 or 90 degrees or something like that, I forget. All right, here we go. Now we're, I can see it's hitting four now and then, but it falls to two. And let's check the ignition out. It's about the same area, but also it fluctuates a little more, or at least it's easier to see the fluctuation. Now let's get the windows down so you can hear that one. Um, obviously you can hear I think the short recovery window sounds way cooler. Um, I mean, when something like a nasty GTR or built Evo or something like that gets up to the line and it's gonna take off, uh, it doesn't sound like that. Non, 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 non. It's, I mean, it's even faster than this car. They probably have like five RPM swing. I don't really know, but it's, and a bunch of cracks and pops and it sounds awesome and then they're off, but, uh, I don't shoot flames and I'm not that fast, but it sounds cool. So let's see how it does with anti-lag. All right, so now I'm flashing the, the small recovery window. It's the same as the first map. I'm just uh, have anti-lag enabled and I'm targeting four degrees after top dead center. All right, so here it is. And like I said, intake temps climbed a little bit. Here we go. So I'm hoping for, I'm guessing it's not gonna be four. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be two and a half. Negative two and a half is what it'll show. Let's see. Oh, okay. It actually was even a little more retarded than I thought. Uh, so yeah, you can see, I think I built about six pounds of boost almost and about five degrees after top dead center. I mean, I've seen some sixes and sevens in there, actually. So, there you go. All right, so here we go with the big recovery window. With anti-lag enabled, same five degree after top dead center target. Intake temps are actually holding pretty solid. So I'm not too worried about that changing anything. Even though it's not cold, I still am not gonna just start it up and give her the goose because I want to make sure oil's had its chance to get everywhere, flowing good, which I mean it should be right away. The oil filter drain back should stop it from draining back, and then the pump should pump right away. But still, it just doesn't make me feel all warm and tingly to fire up and nail her. Here we go. I actually seen some double digits in there, I think. Pretty sure I saw a 10. Pop the windows down. All right, here's the last one. Uh, as much as it pops on only targeting four degrees, I'm kind of scared to target 10 degrees after top dead center because I don't really know if I want that much of an explosion that many times that close to the turbine. But let's let it rip and see what happens. All right, here we go. So eight and nine, I'm not hitting the double digits. 
So I'm obviously not hitting as high of a boost as I was with less advance, but a greater swing, but it's a more consistent number, I guess. Let's get her once with the windows down. ever going to be a flame it was probably right there oh damn let's get the uh gopro under the car well i just gave the gopro the worst drop of its life it wasn't bad but worse than anything before so hopefully uh it's going to be fine because i remember when my uh i didn't do it but when my camcorder fell oh it fucked everything up the audio is fine the videos look like shit now so hopefully this is still gonna be okay let's get the camera under the car and get this done it's raining and it's cold <laughs> she ain't no race car but she kind of sounds like one uh so anyways there you go there's how you set it up there's the results of all the different settings um Hopefully the next time you see me, I'll be putting uh, the flex fuel set up on my car and getting that going. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I will see you guys later. All right, I'm out.